Welcome to NBA Today, presented by ESPN Bet. A hobbled MVP took the court in San Francisco last night. Then the news, it got worse. The very latest on Joel Embiid after being injured in last night's game. And the Knicks, they ended January with a win, capping their best month in 30 years. Why their fans, they should have reason to truly believe, but also to worry. Plus, LeBron James, he wasn't happy after another Lakers loss last night. What the King didn't say and why it's so important. NBA Today starts right now. Welcome to NBA Today, presented by ESPN Bet. She is our wonderful senior NBA writer, Ramona Shelburne. He is NBA champion, Kendrick Perkins. He is the <laughs> Hall of Famer, Michael Wilbon. That was I'm, my past I'm life. I'm in Malika. such great company. That was my past life. I'm Malika Andrews. I was there for all those games. Don't make it sound like it's that long ago. <laughs> well, I was going to ask how you're feeling, but it seems like everybody's feeling good, ready yeah. to start the show. I hope everybody's feeling a little bit better than, unfortunately, the MVP was last yeah. night. Joel Embiid. He will undergo an MRI on his left knee after injuring it in the fourth quarter of Tuesday night's 119-107 loss to the Golden State Warriors. Embiid, you can see here, he grabbed that knee in pain. He ultimately got up. He did limp to the locker room. He did not return to this game after this collision. Ramona, what's the latest that you're hearing on Joel's injury? You know, he's going to get an MRI today. And then I think there's a lot because of his knee injury history. Like each, each knee has its own book. OK, of, right. of stuff that he's had in the past. And so there's a lot of analysis that has to go in on, OK, what does this mean for the for the, from his previous injuries? And from what I understand, this is a new injury. This isn't the, this is the same knee that kept him out of the Denver game that's been swelling up on him. That's causing him a lot of pain. Right. But that injury that he suffered last night when Kaminga fell on him, this has now created a new injury that's going to have to be evaluated here. Obviously, you can see I watched this game in the in the. I couldn't even watch. Right. Like I was like, what? What is he doing out there? Like I, he he didn't. He just looked like he was in pain all night, dragging his dragging his leg on the court, and it now he's added yet another injury on. Yeah, that he looked visibly uncomfortable. The 76ers have now slipped to fifth mm. in the Eastern Conference, and you've talked about this, Perk. How Joel Embiid he doesn't necessarily have the runway that other superstars do because of his injury history to sustain this greatness for a, a certain level of time. Yeah, right. I mean, and look, he's 29 years old, and we don't know how many years he have left of playing at this level. It's not going to be like a Giannis or even you could put, say, Anthony Davis. And we know Anthony Davis' history. So it raised a level of concern, not just for as Joel and B in his career, but how teams in the Philadelphia 76ers view him, right? We talked about, we had this conversation about what do the 76ers need to do to make sure that Joel Embiid is happy so that he don't think about leaving, right, at the start of the season when, when James Harden left? Now, like, how are teams viewing him? How Philly view Joel right now? Like, do they think they actually could win a championship with Joel Embiid as their number one option because of his history of not being able to get through an 82-game season and be able to get in the postseason and play at a high level? Right. Because of his health. Perk, you know how all of you know how in, in basketball, particularly, you think of like players, mm -hmm. like situations, similar context. Mm -hmm. And I, I was wincing when I saw this, Ramona, like you. I just I didn't want to see it. And it reminds me of Amari Stoudemire. And I'm not saying the injuries are the same, but Perk, when, when, when you talk about what a player can be over what period of time, remember how great Amari was at his yeah. peak yep. and he couldn't stay there? Ramona, when you said there's a book on yep. each knee, that's where I thought, oh, my goodness, this reminds me of that. And then so how do you – what do you do? What do you do if you're the team? How do you approach big personnel decisions? What do you do if you're the player and you start to have to manage it differently? So I just – it's, it's uh, just a, a downer all the way around for the Sixers and Joel Embiid. I mean, look, I said on this show on Monday, Malika, this is an injury, this is a situation with his knee that he's going to have to manage yeah. all season long. All season long. And that's before he suffered a new injury when Kaminga fell on him. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to have this conversation, though, and not talk about the 65-game minimum that is now in place for the first time this year for postseason yep. awards for the MVP. Uh, and earlier today, I caught up within the last hour with Executive Vice President, Head of Basketball Operations, Joe Dumars, about just that. And I asked him how the league feels about this new policy. Anytime you put something in, Malika, there are going to be some unintended consequences. 
and we knew that going in, and that's why we, we put the threshold at, like, you can miss up to 20% of the season and still be eligible. And But we always knew that, look, there could be a situation where one of the players went past 20% of the season who's having a good year. But you can't, like, not put the rule in because of that one or two guys that it may affect. Are there any discussions about changing this for next season? There's been no discussions about that. No one has called and said uh, we should, you know, renegotiate this or anything like that. There's been no calls like that. So you can catch the full uh, version of our conversation with Joe Dumars on YouTube, but I pushed back on that when he said mm -hmm. one or two players. It's not just one or two players. No. There would have been five players on All-NBA last year that would not have been eligible, yep. including Giannis Antetokounmpo, who was the lead vote-getter because of that rule. He only played in 63 games. How much did this factor into Joel playing? I, I think it... it Look, he's not playing because of the 65 games, but it's always front and, and center in that separation. Right? You can't separate. He's playing because the Sixers need him. I mean, they, 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 they need him out there to win, and they had lo they'd been losing on this trip here. He, Maxie's obviously got an injury. Tobias has had an illness that he's, that he's been dealing with. And so he's playing because they need the win. Like, they, they just flat out need him on the court. But 65 games is in your head because like, this is a guy who didn't get rookie of the year. It, when he probably he certainly was the best rookie that year, but he did, barely played in enough games. He's already lost one MVP where he probably didn't play in enough games, and I think that affected his votes. And now I think yeah. with this situation, he's going to probably not be eligible and, for but, all NBA and but for Ramona, MVP. That, you know what? Playing games should not be seen as some great luxury. Yeah. Joe Dumars, who was something of an Iron Man, yeah. understands that probably as well, sure. better than most. Yeah. And Malika, yes, it is more... Uh, players than he, than he may have indicated there. It doesn't mean you don't go to the rule. The league has a real tough balancing act here. This was put in as much for fans yeah. and sponsors. You're trying to appease. You're putting a right. product but out there that is put up for thumbs up and thumbs down every year. Do you consider games played? I did played it before. When yes. you voted? Yes. That's what I'm saying. There is no voter who already doesn't consider. I wouldn't they say no voter. There are very few. Most of the voters I know I, consider that when they're doing it. And so look at Tyrese Halliburton and how yep. he is playing yep. this year. The man will lose out on 41 million dollars this year if he doesn't make all NBA not because of how he's playing he only has one year to do it but because of the legitimate injuries that have kept him out there has to be a balance here but but, but we're talking about awards and so first of all those things should not be tied okay so let's get yeah. that out okay. that should not be tied in, in no way should our votes did help determine to any degree what a player's compensation is none that's yeah. just dumb and it's wrong now separately there were players last year I, I no, I didn't vote for on first or second team. I'm not going to say I didn't vote for him at all. I might have put him on third team. My sure. third team was loaded Mine, with people same. who put. But I, my, yep. mine was not 65. It might have been 60. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but it's a difficult thing. I yeah, thought, I think Joe's position, it's a tough position to take and have. But again, if you didn't have load management and four out of five players on starting lineups missing games and visiting arenas, the league would never have had to visit this in the first place. And it goes to my question. How did we get here? Yep. How did we get here? And the same people that's complaining about it, the players, the coaches, the front offices, right? They're the reason that we're in this position now. They're the reason that they have rules in place, right? Accountability means everything. I'm going back and I'm looking. Barkley, career average, 72 games played. Malone, a career average, 81 games played. Yep. Magic, a career average, 76 games played. Bird, a career average, 77 career, uh, 77 games played. Jordan, a career average, 80 Ooh. games played. That's so, so at the end of the day, it's like, it's like we're sitting up here and we, we're saying, oh, it's unfair. But to be honest, no one is screaming Greg Popovich in the San Antonio Spurs because the number one factor was was because of load management. So at the end of the day, we're talking about something that they have made this bed and they have to lay in it. Right. Rules are going to be in place. Is there a tweak, though? Is there a tweak yeah. where just like a disabled player exception where guys out here? Or what yeah. about this? Bobby Marks floated tiers. So for, yeah. for MVP, maybe it's 65 games. But for all NBA, maybe it's 58, which, by the way, is the same threshold yeah. you have to meet in order to lead the league in scoring. Why wouldn't it be 58 yeah. games? 
Look, I do want to underscore something Joe Dumar said. He said there are always unintended consequences yep. that come with a rule that very it did come from a place of well, y'all made your bed, you got to lie in it. That I'm not a taking hard, anything away tough, from that. Fair observation, Joe Dumar's made. First of all, the, the phrase <laughs> "consider the source." When you got Joe Dumars sitting up there, that means <laughs> yeah. something. It means something to me that Joe Dumars is the person who's poring he over this, studying it, agonizing over it. five games, one time. One time in his career. Career. And yeah. guess what? And guess what? Those players that I named, Barkley, Malone, Magic, Bird, and Jordan, he played against all of them. So he watched those guys suit up night in and night out. Like, this is what you signed up for. This is what you signed up for. I, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a difficult discussion that is going to be revisited. Mm -hmm. I know it's not revisited yet, and that was a great interview yeah. with Joe. Thank you. It is going to come up now, because it, it, and particularly yeah. as it relates to Embiid, who you see in an unfortunate situation that was not of his own doing. But, but as Joe said, you know, are you going to revisit the even sing, single digits, Malika, and yeah. you raise a good point. If it's five players, if it's six players, are you going to raise it? And by the way, one quick thing. I've had players pull me aside in past years before the rule, and they knew I had a vote. And they said to me, that guy missed 23 games. Yeah, you gonna yeah. vote for him over me? Uh-huh. And, it's, it, and it was a, it's a jarring question. It's sobering. Because you know the people who are out there 80 games like that all the time, what, they don't deserve a special consideration or nod? Yes, they do. Look, the decision is probably gonna be made for him now. I mean, he was thinking yeah. about this every single game. Yep. Can I go out there? Is this a game that you want to take off? Do I want to put myself through this? It, re it makes that decision in Denver look very different now. Right. But I, the decision now with this latest injury, I think is probably going to make the decision. The for only place that I don't think any one of us wants to get to is voting amongst the best of the rest, where the best have been taken out just by nature of not playing 65 games, maybe because they played 60, you know, four or three or two, and that we're looking at it saying, okay, well, I guess these are our options, but that's not what the game that we love has to offer is best. Uh, coming up here on NBA Today, we have a whole lot to get to, my friends. The Knicks, they started 2024 just two games over 500, but now, Park, they're one of the best teams in the East. Yeah, number three. Why their fans have reason to be psyched, but maybe a little concerned at the Better same time. Better revive Stephen A. And <laughs> if you think Damian Lillard's decision to leave Portland was easy, I mean, think again. Here's the one word Damian used to describe his time in Rip City as he makes his return. And after another loss, have LeBron and the Lakers reached a crossroads for the season? James's post-game comments and what he means ahead.